first and goal. Go the Tiger Cats looking to put the hammer down. And they do! Chris Bauman, touchdown! There is a penalty flag at the five-yard line. This flag was thrown late, so it's going to be interesting to see if this affects the touchdown or not. After the score, taunting, Hamilton number 53. Ten yards will be applied on the kickoff. Chris Bauman's second touchdown of the season. Again, getting some more playing time tonight with Arlan Bruce on the sideline, making good on it. Well, you know that that position in the offense, you're going to get some looks. Chris Bauman's making the most of this opportunity, stepping up. Kevin Land throws his 28th touchdown pass of the season. 30 to 3, Tiger Cats. 27-point lead. Leroy Van. Andy Baranachea. Special teams bringing him down. Good field position this time for the Alouettes to work with. There has been. They find themselves reeling again. Chris Bauman takes advantage of the fact that Billy Parker has outside leverage. Just presses him a little bit and then beats him to the inside. But Parker starts off the play already playing outside of Bauman, making that inside release that much easier for the receiver. Again, a former first round, first overall in 2007. Fourth season as a cat. And in Whitaker. Gets loose and gets a first down. And Dylan Barker finally bringing him down. Montreal Alouettes have not had a lot of success moving this football tonight to this point. The Montreal Alouettes look at their first half possessions. A field goal late. All they had to show for those seven possessions. Three of them ending in turnovers. Team can stage a comeback and led by one guy. It's that guy, Calvillo, going deep into double coverage. SJ Green didn't even know the ball was coming. SJ Green starts off as the inside receiver in this set. He's just going to take it deep. Has a step on his guy, but help. From that free safety, Dylan Barker, the third-year man, another one of those former number one overall picks. Gets over to ensure that Green can't make a play on that ball. This is where the Ticat defense has stood its ground tonight on second downs. Calvillo, outlet, perfect pass to S.J. Green. And Bo Smith chops him down, but S.J. Green... Brings it inside the 10-yard line, and here come the Alouettes. Again, quarterback and receiver get credit, but keep an eye on the running back, number two, Brandon Whitaker. He's going to step up to the right side to pick up a twist. He tracks the linebacker, Jamal Johnson, meets him in the gap. That allows Calvillo to step up and make this play to SJ Green. Hard to believe we've said that the Alouettes have not scored a touchdown into the third quarter of a ball game. Chance now. Now Richardson. Keith Knowlton with the tackle. Part of this trio of former BC Lion linebackers. Three man wrecking crew here in Hamilton. Really have anchored this Hamilton defense since they have been brought together, resurrected in Hamilton. That guy has been sensational. Oh, yeah, that strip of Anthony Calvillo that led to the Stevie Banks touchdown in the first quarter. Second and goal now. Pressure time. Calvillo deep in the end zone. Unable to run under it is Andrew Hawkins. Now 
Veal will look to the sideline and down 27, a field goal isn't going to do it right now. They're going to go for it. Keep an eye on the receiver here. Inside man at the bottom of the screen. He's going to try and go to the corner. So he steps to the inside, fights outside. Ball slightly overthrown. Well, who do you go to now? Third and goal. Green, Richardson, Bratton, Cahoon. Alvino to the end zone for Green. No penalty flag. And another turnover, this time on downs from the Montreal Alouettes, who have been stifled here tonight by the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Well, Bo Smith, his secondary, getting the likes of Bo Smith back from the NFL, trial with the New York Jets, Joaquin Bradley and Jason Shivers both hurt. Had to make some adjustments, but getting Bo Smith back is a godsend to the Cats. Well, it sure has been. He gets those matchups one-on-one -on, -one on the short side corner, and you know in clutch situations like this, he's going to be called upon to defend. Does a great job on that one against S.J. Green. Long field now for the Cats. Been able to move the football tonight, though, and been able to protect it. Glenn, again open. Downfield is Marcus Thigpen. Knocked out on the sidelines. The Hamilton Ticats have committed this week to trying to make more use of the speed of Marcus Thigpen in their offense. We've seen them try to get the ball to him in reverses, a couple of passing situations with crossing routes. He's run the ball on tossage to the outside. Here, using him on that go route on the outside, just letting him use his speed and run right past the defender. What a debut. Marcus' first touch Thigpen had for the CFL. First touch this season, touchdown. Touchdowns five different ways. Remarkable. DeAndre Cox straight on. And plows for yardage. So a little mix and match now for the Hamilton offense. And uh, now Kevin Glenn, most touchdown passes in one season. 28 on that toss to Chris Bauman. New career high for Kevin Glenn. Remember 2007, he was the East nominee as the CFL's most outstanding player. Second down and three yards. Bauman again! What a night for Chris Bauman in front of Billy Parker. Getting his chance and succeeding. Chris Bauman, the middle receiver in the trips formation easing the pain of having Arlen Bruce out of the lineup. Once again, beats Parker to the inside. Quick stem out, cuts underneath. And doing a good job of catching the ball as that's been one of the knocks against Chris Bauman. There's been inconsistency holding on to the football. He's made catches in tight situations here tonight. Four catches, 89 yards. Marcus Thickhead in the backfield. Down Main Street, look out! Marcus Thickhead! inside the 10 and a penalty flag behind the play and it looks like it might go against Montreal some unnecessary roughness extracurriculars major foul unnecessary roughness Montreal number 96 quite at the end of the play half the distance first down that's former cat JP Pekasiak Pete Diakowski was in on the play. And Marcus Thigpen being utilized in several different manners tonight. That's what he is. He's not only a, a dual back, he is multi-threat. Well, we saw a Maurice Mann drive in the first half. We'll call this one the Marcus Thigpen drive. Big catch after lining up as a wide receiver. Tremendous burst on that run. Glenn to the end zone again. That time for Marquay McDaniel covered by Chip Cox. So it will be second and goal. That may sound odd to say with the Hamilton Tiger Cats currently holding a 27 point lead in this football game. I truly believe they need to score a touchdown here. They've got to keep that foot on the gas. 
and try to bury the Montreal Alouettes. Not many teams have been able to do that, especially saying that in the third quarter with less than six minutes to play in the quarter. This could go a long way to that. Glenn in trouble, throws. Incomplete pass. Again, looking for Mark Quay McDaniel. Glenn, uh, one of the few times that actually tonight an Alouette was able to get a hand on Kevin Glenn. Chip Cox right there. One of the few tackles that Chip Cox will miss. Kevin Glenn nicely eludes him and manages to get the throw away, but under pressure from Shea Emery. To put this one down just a little bit too low for Mark Wayne McDaniel. A little chippy now for Sandro DeAngelis. Just outside the 10 yard line. 30 of 40 this season. DeAngelis has struggled at times. The guy who had the best percentage in CFL history before this year. A 30 point lead for the Tiger Cats. In McPherson coming into the game, it looks like a 30 point Hamilton lead. Again, a win tonight by the Tiger Cats, a loss by the Argos tomorrow in Winnipeg. And the Cats clinch second place in the East and home field advantage for the East semifinal. Brian Bratton just over the 35 yard line. And is AC coming in or will it be AM? It looks like Adrian McPherson is coming into the ball game. Here he comes. Get ready for the changeup. Adrian McPherson, who led the Montreal Alouettes to a win here in Hamilton earlier this season in his only start of the year, did that on the strength of 161 passing yards in that football game. A little bit different player, obviously, from Anthony Calvillo. McPherson also threw for 238 in that ball game. That's what he did right here, September 11th. Certainly capable, Adrian McPherson. He's been predominantly a backup the last three seasons. Former fifth round NFL pick. New Orleans Saints. There's an injury on the field. You know it's a good night in Hamilton when Angela Mosca, who always kind of pays us a little visit in the booth here, comes by and he's smiling and pointing to his tummy. <laughs> Well, we always prefer to see Big Edge smiling. <laughs> yeah. We try to keep him happy. John Banks is the injured Alouette. Backup linebacker, special teams player. And they're checking out that ankle. See all the, you know, so for some people who might be new to the game or out there, some kids who are watching. And, you know, it's, it's a... And it seems like an elementary question for people who follow football all the time, but you see the spatting, the taping that a lot of players have to go through before a ball game. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what exactly each player prefers or how much tape they require. Well, it is it is really such an individual thing as far as what players like. I actually never got tape, never liked really? to have tape on. I felt it was very restrictive. Now, Chris Schultz in the studio, Schultz was actually forced to retire because he was throwing the Toronto Argonauts tape budget out of whack. Oh there is third string quarterback Chris Leak. John Banks is down. We'll step aside and come back to Iverwind Stadium. And you never like to see this when a player has to be carted from the field. John Banks in some distress out there. Teammates wishing him well. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, John Banks, the linebacker, is blocking just to the right of the upright on your screen. Typical special teams play. Mark Beswick, the Hamilton defender, ends up rolling up his legs, roll on the back of John Banks' leg, causing that ankle. And the worst part of these injuries, and have we seen some terrible injuries in the last few weeks as the season winds down. It's the worst possible timing as the teams look towards November and the postseason. So Adrian McPherson now at the helm. 
numbers this season, just over 50%. Play action, and knocked down by Stevie Bags. Defensive player of the week. He may have just locked up defensive player of the week for another week tonight. Well, he's certainly defensive player in the last 40 minutes of football. Stevie Bags has been everywhere. Here he's at the bottom of the line. He's just gonna rush free. Gets the hands up to swat down this pass. First plays Hawkins, continues on to the quarterback. Fumble recovery, touchdown, interception, and now a pass knockdown. And has been in the backfield predominantly for most of the night. A nightmare for opposing quarterbacks. Second and 10 on the Montreal 37 and penalty flag. I hate to see that one whistle dead. Offside, control number 18. Five yard penalty, remains second down. Stevie Bags, he was feeling it. He pulled out the, the patented Stevie Bags spin on that one, all for naught. He is a character, one of the most vocal guys in the game. Second and 15 now. McCurson, pump and go, and he has S.J. Green open. Finally touched by Jerome Dennis. Adrian McPherson connecting with S.J. Green. 